Hey everyone, Missy Kitten here. So today I wanted to do more of a lighthearted video because sometimes it helps to do something a little bit like that to kind of take your mind off of things. And so today I figured for you Game of Thrones fans, along with myself, I figured we would actually just kind of have a little, little, little conversation about it. I figured the show's been over for a while now. Um, those who watch it kind of like regularly, they have time to catch up. Um, if you don't watch it and you want to, spoilers. So don't watch this video, I guess. But I guess that's enough of a warning right now. So. I just want to start off by saying a lot of people heckled, for lack of a better word, season 8. And, I mean, I understand, but at the same time, I don't. I don't think it was as bad as everyone was saying. I mean, there's only so much you can do with the all-out war that they basically had going. I, I do believe that Daenerys was destined to become the Mad Queen. And I, I thought it was quite fitting, actually, that they did that. Quite frankly, the thing I am mad most about is my girl Brianna Tarth was screwed over by my boy Jamie Lannister. You know, she she finally got that, that Jamie Lannister D. And then he was like, nah, I'm all about Cersei still. And honestly, that that's what messed me up the most. I don't even, honestly, was that in season eight or did that happen late season seven? I'm, I'm pretty sure that was eight. I'm re-watching it again, actually. So... That is honestly what messed me up the most, was my poor girl, Brienne of Tarth. And before we continue anymore, I, I have to say I'm very bad with the characters' names. So, I also feel bad for, and this is why I'm saying I'm bad at names, because he's just going to get a nice nickname. The Ginger Wildling guy. I forgot his name. You know, he, maybe Brienne should have gotten up on his D. Because you know what? He would have treated her right. Or, or maybe, maybe she should have gotten on the square. I know his name. I'm literally, it is on the tip of my tongue. Podrick. Shogun for Podrick. Not only was Podrick dedicated and loyal, but apparently he was very good. I can't honestly, I can't remember if Podrick died at any point. So real quick while we are talking, I'm going to look up and see if he did. Um, Like I said, I do think Daenerys was destined to become the Mad Queen regardless of the basically John I think had John not been brought back by Melisandra a lot of things might not have happened but I feel like she still would have been destined to become the Mad Queen Had Melisandre not brought Jon Snow back to life, they likely wouldn't have been fighting the Night King, and her dragon would have never died. She was there because of Jon Snow. 
But I feel like regardless of that, she would have still become the Mad Queen. I think it was, you know, naturally in her blood. Her brother, Viserys, was that his name? You know, he, he obviously had that crazy in him as well. It's so cute. You know, she had just had so much loss and devastation that I think she was destined to become it. And I'm just going to say this right now. I am making this video because Zach and I were supposed to watch this show together, okay? Um, we got locked out of the Wi-Fi at his uncle's house. And we weren't able to watch it. I come back here, I have free reign of the Wi-Fi, and I start re-watching the episodes that we had already watched. And then I'm like, I can't control myself. And I continued watching and finished the show. I tell him that he needs to use his data to watch the rest of it too. Because there are things that I would very much like to talk about. And he just says no. He's like, I don't feel like watching it right now. So this has been like a few months now. And I'm like, but there's things I really want to talk about. He still says no. I tell my mom, I'm like, mom, you should watch Game of Thrones. And she's like, why should I watch Game of Thrones? I'm like, because there's stuff I really want to talk about. And she's like, I'm not going to watch Game of Thrones just so you can talk about it. Go talk to your brother or your sister. And I'm like, Mom, they don't understand. So I'm sitting here, like, I get really analytical. Analytic? Analytical? I analyze my shows. If you've been here for a while, you've watched me talk about Walking Dead. You've watched me talk about American Horror Story. So you know that I get into these things. And I love to get deep into this stuff. So I've been wanting to talk about this stuff for a while. So I figured I would just make a video about this so I can finally get some of this stuff off my chest. So thank you internet for being my ear. Um, doesn't say if Podrick died. According to this one, it does not say I'm still gonna keep looking. But um like I said, I think regardless of losing her dragon and losing I know her name. It 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 starts with an M. Oh The lady that Grey Worm loved, and basically her handmaiden, I guess. I'll have to look up her name right after this because um, I'm going totally brain dead on her name. I think, you know, regardless of losing all these people, she still would have, Daenerys would have still turned into the Mad Queen. Um. Quite frankly, I am very mad that Theon Greyjoy died. I kind of wanted Theon to get with Sansa. I ended up loving this relationship that they ended up having after he helped her and 
protected her and everything from Ramsey. I ended up really, really hating what they did to Bran in the last few seasons. And I mean, I can't be the only one because I mean, okay, Patrick lived. Um, excuse me, I take a drink real quick. You watch when, excuse me, when Theon took over and like sacked Winterfell, Bran was so concerned about all these people that were basically his people because he was basically the reigning dude of Winterfell. You know, he had the compassion, he had the care and everything. And then later seasons, when he started really becoming what he was, you know, he stopped caring. He stopped having really emotions. Like when Jojen died, I think that was his name, Jojen, Jojo? I think it was Jojen. You know, he, he didn't give a damn that he died for him. And then Hodor died. Oh my god, I cried so hard when Hodor died because he was he was just he was so precious. You know, he had been there the whole time helping him and Hodor. And then he didn't give a damn about Hodor, and that hurt, I cried, you know? So I really hated what they did to Bran. They just made him like this, I don't know, I guess a husk? And that was just, I hated that. You know, they just really ruined his character. Um. I guess it does make sense that he becomes the king of Westeros because, you know, he, like, can see all. But I believe it was Tywin Lannister. He said... Wisdom does not always make a king. He said that to um, Tumlin, Tumlin, the boy king, I think that's what they call him. And they basically contradicted themselves with that, I guess. And for them to kill off Varys like that, that really, that really got me too. I ended up, you know, I started the show and I was like, I don't like this guy. I don't trust him. And then, bam, they just burn him. I believe it was they burned him. You know, Ty Tyrion thought he was doing the right thing. Nope. And it was just my heart. I mean, I guess it is kind of like, in a sense, like Walking Dead, you know, you can't get attached to any characters because everyone dies. And that sucks. I hate that. But, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I I have to I still don't really understand why everyone's so harsh on season eight. It had its flaw. All the seasons, every season had its flaw. You know, I think people were being too harsh on the whole fucking coffee cup. Excuse my language. You know, the 
the scene where it was dark. Yeah, that was a huge mistake on their part. Honestly, what bugged me more than anything throughout the whole show was the CGI, really. Like, of the wolves, the wolves really bugged me. Like, people are complaining about the coffee cup. What about the CGI of these wolves? Because I didn't think it was that good. But for me, I didn't really see all that much of a problem with the last season. I just have more questions than answers, really. Because they never explained why the White Walkers wanted the babies. Why they made those weird symbols. I mean, sure, they explained, like, who the Night King was. But they didn't explain some of the things that they do. I don't know if that's explained in the books. I have yet to read them. Uh, actually, I'm going to listen to them because I can't focus on books, so I will do audiobooks. And hopefully I can find answers. If not, then hopefully they do a prequel where they can explain it. I have a hair that's really annoying me. Um, they also never explained why in, I believe it was season two, the White Walkers, like, marched up, like, right up on Sam, looked him in the eyes, and never did anything to him. But, I guess that's what they leave us with. Like I said, I, I hope they do, like, a prequel, and they explain some of the stuff but if not then i guess i just leave confused all in all it was definitely it was a good series you know i had waited for so long watching it because i mean i wasn't i'm one of those person those people who do get kind of annoyed by like sex being like everywhere like why do you have to throw it into a show every two seconds but I definitely got past that. Um, I was more bothered like by the boobs because I was like, is that how mine are supposed to look? So, I mean, that was my life during the whole thing. It's still where I rewatch it. That's my problem too, still. But... I think I've probably rambled on enough. So, as much as I want to keep rambling, I've probably said way too much for one video <laughs> about this show. So, thank you guys so much for listening. And I will see you all next time. Bing.